I was born immediately after the war. And for me, it was part of my conflict, if you will, with my parents. This was an issue that came up time and again. Was the war a crime? What was the Holocaust about? And uh, I also wrote Sophie Scholl and was a co-producer for that film. And I can only tell you that uh, this kind of conflict will not cease to exist and questioning will not cease to exist. But when we... Um, and, and this is what the sister of Sophie Scholl also said. When we, after the war, would walk through the streets of Ulm, people would immediately switch to the other side of the road. Because uh, very often in the immediate aftermath of the war, these people were presented as uh, traitors. When it comes to Elsa, it is the case that to this day he still has been vilified. And when we started uh, this film, we um, interviewed distant relatives uh, of his, and uh, they still felt uh, uneasy about this. Uh, it was a great struggle to uh, really emancipate this person, to uh, rehabilitate and uh, reinstate his uh, reputation. Somebody who back in the 30s already was willing to resist uh, Nazism. And I think that this uh, film is a kind of a contribution to try and reestablish his reputation. I felt very strongly about showing this in graphic detail or as much as possible, because nowadays we very often talk about torture in a very abstract fashion. Nobody really fully understands what torture means and what it means to inflict pain on a person. But more than that, it is also the absolute humiliation, the reduction of the other to the level of an animal, doing something to a person that you would never do to an animal. And in a film history, there are very, very few examples of how this can be depicted or how, the, how images could be could convey this. So in this case, it is a graphic representation of what they did back then, but it is also important to put that into a context, the context of what is happening on a daily basis in so many countries to this day. In Iran, for example, these hangings and floggings take place. They are repulsive. They are absolutely reprehensive. Of course, it is uh, difficult to pass from death penalty to uh, being a seducer, but this is the scope, and that really uh, attracted me to this character as an actor, because he's someone who lives a very light life, moving from one woman to the other, enjoying life, and then coming back to his own village and seeing the dark developments that are gathering pace, and thus also developing this urge to do something, and then having the stamina, the clarity of purpose to go ahead, isolate himself during a year, not telling anyone about what he's doing, shielding his entire entourage from his own plan. And I've also talked to the relatives, I talked to his nephew, who said that nobody ever gained any insight or had any inkling as to what he was doing. And nobody could really link this attack with him because as a personality, he was completely different. He came across as being completely different. And at the end you see this broken person who doubts himself, doubts the world, who spent six years in isolation, had no contact with society, and I think it was a great honor to play this character. And as a an actor, I have to say, it was quite riveting to cover the scope and it was really exciting to work with these great actors, with this great cast, with this great director and wonderful uh, cinematographer, Judith. I have to hand this to you. That's a bouquet for you. And there's so much tradition with its own poetry and songs, games and rituals in the same, and we cannot continue this in the same way as it was done back then. I mean, it is even beautiful if you look at it, even if you see, even those swastikas have a kind of aesthetic. And that is something, and at the same time, this uh, 
rural, um, bucolic life is no longer accessible to us. And that is something that uh, really uh, is painful to me. That is what I tried to relate in this film. I think this film is a, a merger of three genres. On the one hand side, it is a, a political thriller. It is also a film about uh, my home country, and it is also aspect. a love story. Um, Last year in autumn, Massacre and also Paris after the massacre in Paris, a uh, movement uh, started gaining traction in Germany, Pegida. How do you, uh, context, as a filmmaker, position yourself vis-à-vis -vis the political context in Germany? I live in Dresden, says Christian Friedel, and in one scene, or indeed in several scenes, I observe the emerging, or indeed uh, established, national socialist movement and quite frankly I feel shudders when I see this movement in Dresden. I can understand that bit of it but uh, I think that there's a strong right-wing undercurrent that is benefiting from this in an opportunistic way as well but I do believe that this is a timely film. We have an asset that is absolutely important, our voice. And every person has to be political and everybody has to be aware of the fact that you need to raise your voice and not turn a blind eye. Georg Elsa looked at the way things were developing. He had a clear, discerning gaze and I think that is important and that is what is shown in the film and therefore it has to be shown in cinemas.